Welcome to VLOOKUP week video number four. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, VLOOKUP Shark week number four, you can click on the link below the video. Hey, uh, so we've had three videos so far. We did VLOOKUP, LOOKUP, and INDEX and MATCH. In this video, we want to talk about match types, whether we do an exact match or an approximate match. And we're going to see that the approximate match calculates a lot more quickly than exact match. We'll see how each one of them calculates and then we'll see how to simulate exact match using approximate match to gain calculation speed. Now, exact match, it does a linear search from top to bottom. This column is not sorted. Down here we want to look up a text title and return the page number. So I'm going to do exact match. Now VLOOKUP and index and match do exact match. Well, exact match will do a zero that says, hey, do exact match. Uh, lookup function doesn't do exact match. I'm going to do VLOOKUP. I'm going to say, hey, look up that, comma. There's my first column, second column. The second column is has the value I want to return, and then comma, zero for exact match. It literally goes through and goes and looks at, and you know, that's the wrong year. That book is five. So literally, it, the, the lookup, either one of these formulas here, takes that value and checks on each one. And when it finds it, and then jumps over. So exact match is linear. It goes from top to bottom. On a large data set, you can imagine that takes a very long time. However, we can actually speed up our calculations. If we come down here, if we're allowed to sort the column that we're trying to match something against, then we can use approximate match and significantly improve our calculating formula calculating time. All right, so here I want to look this up, but I've sorted it. And this is alphabetic, so it's just like alphabet. G comes after D. Let's go ahead and see if this works. I'm going to use VLOOKUP first. I'm going to look this up, comma within this, second column, and I'm going to leave the Nothing, I'm not going to put anything into the fourth argument because the default is approximate match. So it gets the correct uh, page number there. Now, what it's doing as a metaphor, we'll, we'll look at exactly technically what approximate match does. But as a metaphor, look what it's doing. We, and, and I've had lots of videos. Uh, at YouTube about VLOOKUP, and I always use this metaphor. We take this into our head, we race through when we find the first value bigger than it. M, so we're looking up something with an M, it hits an R, it jumps back one and it returns this to the page. So even with uh, words like that, it still uh, does that. Let's uh, see lookup, right? Because we can use lookup. I'm going to look this up, comma. I don't have to put a column index because it always takes the item from the last column. I'm going to hit the F4 key. All right, so that's all uh, wonderful because it really does speed up calculations. But here's a problem. What is it doing here? It's looking up this when it can't find it. Why doesn't it say not available? Because it's doing an approximate search. So E, it's running through. It finds the first letter bigger than E, which is G, and it jumps back as a metaphor and returns that to the cell. Now, you can use data validation to try and limit what goes in. But in some situations, you maybe want a formula that will tell you when there is no match, because there is no match here. Approximate match is doing what it's supposed to. It's finding the first bigger one and going back one. All right, so here is a formula that you can use to use approximate match speed, but simulate just like it was an exact match. So I'm going to say if. And I first want to check. I want to say the logical test is going to be, is that title in this list? And I'm going to create this formula and copy it down. This one will be. This one will not be. So I'm going to say, is that? And I'm going to say equal lookup. And now I'm going to look this up. Just that column, F4. Now, this construction we saw in the lookup video two videos ago when we did conditional formatting for a row. What it's doing is the B33, that's the thing. And it says is equal, but we're looking up the thing? Yeah, so it looks up here. If it can find it, which it does, um, 
Microsoft Multiplan here, then it's going to say is the thing equal to the thing. And if I highlight this and hit F9, you can see it actually found it, Control Z. And if I highlight this and hit the F9 key, it'll say true. So that's going to be our trigger, is the item we're looking up in the list. Now when we get down to here, and we'll see, we'll calculate our formula when we copy it down. But we're going to get an Excel 2010 right there. And this thing will find the wrong thing. It'll find doing business with VisiCalc. So that's going to give us a true or false. That's a logical test. If it's true, then let's run the full lookup. I'm going to look up this, comma, column 1, 2, F4, close parentheses. Otherwise, what do we want? Some indication. I'm going to put in quotes. No match. Control Enter and drag it down. So here it found a match and it returned uh, 323 pages. But here, what did it do? If I highlight this and hit the F9, it says, is Excel 2010 equal to the lookup? F9, those two things are not equal. So this is a way of using approximate match and checking, is this item actually in our list? Right now, that's going to give us a false if I hit the F9 key, and it will deliver this. It'll skip right over that. So that is a way. And it's funny because we have two lookups, right? So, But these two lookups on large data sh uh, sets will be significantly faster than one lookup doing exact match. Now, there's two great posts. Here's Aladdin at the Mr. Excel message board has a great post on uh, this type of formula. And also, Charles Williams uh, has the decisionmodels.com site. And his specialty is uh, calculation and how to make things calculate more quickly. He has a great article on this topic. Now let's look, before we look at a large data set, let's go ahead and under, try to understand how approximate match or binary search works. Here is the lookup value. And I want to return, I want to look through this column here and return uh, this value. So as a metaphor, we put it in our brain, we race through. When we bump into the first bigger one, we jump back, we get the above average, and we throw it there. But here's the idea behind approximate match. When we do approximate match, and we're doing it here, it divides the table in two and checks against the lookup value, bigger values um, and the smaller values, right? So it's going to check 27 against 22. It says, is 27 greater than or equal to 2, 22? That's true. So then it takes this bottom half, skipping over the top half, and places it down here and does the next calculation. Now, if this comes out false, it takes the top half. So right off the bat, just the first step, eliminates half the data set. And it successively does it. So now it got a true here, so it brings it down here. And now it repeats. It goes to the middle. It says, is the 27, the lookup value, greater than or equal to 24? That's true. So it takes the upper half means the bigger values, right? So it takes this upper half here and repeats it down here. And again, it does a check. Right here is. 27, the lookup value is 27 greater than or equal to 29. That's false. So then it takes this 24, brings the above average up here, and returns that value. So for a large data set, this method of successively taking half and dividing it half and dividing it will gain uh, great advantages in calculating speed. Now let's look at a great example. And we're going to do. Look at a formula we did for two-way lookup. Um, sorry, not two-way lookup. Uh, two criteria. This is when we have two lookup values. And we saw a formula back in, a couple formulas back in lookup video for this. But here's, a, here's the two lookup values, a state and a city. And I want to return the zip. Now, to help aid, right, let's look at a formula we did in the lookup. Uh, video. We took the lookup value 1, we created an array, we joined these two lookup items, and then we joined the columns, and we matched with an, an equal sign to get trues and falses. 
Then we divide it by the 1, and then we had the 1 look it up and return from the F column. That's the zip codes. That works, and that's fine, but boy, does it take a long time to calculate. Here's VLOOKUP. Oh, OK, so to avoid having to join columns inside the formula, which takes a lot of calculating speed, let's go ahead, join the two elements in a cell. That'll be our lookup value. And then create an extra column. And all we did is we join those two together, the join symbol and some text in between. Created that. That's our new column where we're going to look something up. All right, so what I did here, and we're going to time these. We did VLOOKUP. That's exact. We did index and match, doing exact. We did this great formula right here. Is that item equal to look up that item, right? This is the part that says, hey, is the thing I'm looking up actually in the list? And then there's our lookup to look it up, otherwise no match. And if you have a situation where you're never going to have something in the cell that's not in the list, then we just run a straight V lookup with fourth column or lookup. Now, before you run the formula, since everything needs to be sorted, you have to get this column sorted. And how do you do that? We have two criteria. No problem. Step one, sort city A to Z. And then step two, sort state A to Z. This is the major sort, so you do it last. Then the first column will be sorted. And then you create your formula. Now let's go over here. I got this range timer from decisionmodels.com. Amazing site. All right, so there's our formulas here. I went ahead and calculated. And actually, what I did was I did three different lookup values and timed each one three times and then took the average. And then calculated the percentage change compared to the minimum one. So over here, there's our formulas. These are virtually identical, right? We did a sample, so we these you can just say these are the same. This formula with two lookups is uh, only slightly takes a slightly longer time to calculate than uh, running it just once. But look at this. This is compared. That time, what's the percentage change from the min up to this? That's 500%, 500%, 2,800%. So, and this is the array one, right? Even when we have two lookups, if we can sort and sort that first column and do approximate lookup, significant savings in terms of calculating time. All right, um, great formula there. Uh, and right here, we'll see you next trick.